Hey friends, it's Danny. Welcome back to Dine at Frugal. On today's episode, we are making a from scratch pie dough recipe. Uh, I'm making quiche for dinner tonight and I wanted to have uh, or make my really easy pie dough recipe um, to use for that. So I wanted to bring you along on the ride. I've also uploaded that recipe onto the channel as well. So I'll put a link in the iCards or down in the description so you can go and check that out if you want to make that as well. But for now, let's get on to our pie dough. Okay, so this is really only three ingredients. I have my flour, my salted butter, and some milk. So in my bowl, I've just given my flour a quick whisk. And to that, I am going to add my cubed butter. And this is incredibly cold. That's one of the tricks for making pie dough. Keep everything cold. So make it cold, bake it hot is the rule. Um, so I'm just going to add that in there. The first thing that we're going to use is our hands in order to incorporate the flour and the butter together. And what we're going to do, and yes, my hands are clean. What we're going to do is we're going to smush the flour and the butter together. Um, but we don't want, I had always been taught when making pie crust that we want um, for it to resemble breadcrumbs. But we don't. We actually want to keep the butter in pea-sized pieces so that we get a really nice flaky crust. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just getting it to a point where um, the butter and the flour are incorporated, but the butter is still kept in pea-sized um, pea pieces. So I'm actually making mine gluten-free. Uh, I have just gotten this one-for-one gluten-free flour, which means that I can use it um, as an alternative in any of the recipes or the standard recipes that I have. So hopefully that works out for me. Um, but if you're not gluten free, you can just use regular all purpose or plain flour inside this recipe. Okay, so now that I have cut the butter into our flour, you'll see then that, that it look, looks like a very shaggy mess. Um, I just made sure that all the big clumps of butter are out of there and just press the butter into sheets. So that's what it should look like uh, once it's ready. And now I have a table knife. We're going to add our milk in here to bring this all together. So here I have my milk. Now it really depends on... I've got about two and a half tablespoons of milk in here. It really just depends on how much you're going to need to bring this together. You don't want a wet dough, you just want it to come together. So I'm just going to add a little bit of milk to begin with. And I'm just going to use my knife to cut through that. Actually may need more than I think and you'll see that I'm just using my knife to cut through I'm not stirring I'm just using the knife to let's see if I can get you a little bit closer to cut through the mixture just to try and bring that all together You'll know that it's ready when you can clump it like this and it doesn't fall apart. Clearly, mine is not there. Um, it's just a tad too dry. So let me go and get some more milk. I think we're there. I think I ended up adding about four, four tablespoons. Um, but there we go. That's what it should look like. It doesn't break apart when I press it together. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to get some cling wrap. wrap I'm just going to put it over my bench so that we can wrap our pastry in it I may have just put a bit much but oh well let's just go with it all right <clears throat> so I'm going to pour my dough um, onto the bench I'm going to start to bring this all together on here just to get it nice and compacted in. 
bring you in a little bit closer so that you can see what the dough looks like um, after I've put it onto our Glad Wrap. Um, you should see that there are little flakes of butter on there and then some flour, but it's all nice and hydrated and sticking together like a dough. Flakes of butter in there. So last thing I need to do is go ahead and wrap this up and put it in the fridge for half an hour. All right, so here we have our packaged dough. This is gonna go in the fridge for half an hour just to, well, actually I'm gonna leave it in longer than half an hour because I'll use it when I'm ready to make our quiche. Um, but leave it, if you are gonna make this, leave it in for at least half an hour just to let all that flour hydrate with the milk and the butter. Um, so, uh, once we're ready to put this into our pie shell, I will bring you back. So just after I turned off the camera, something didn't sit right with me. I thought the pastry was still a little bit too dry. So I went ahead and added about another one and a half to two tablespoons, actually maybe a little bit less, maybe more on the one to one and a half tablespoons of milk. And it came together much better into a bowl. So this is what it looks like. It was just, it just didn't sit right. It was a little bit too crumbly. So that's what I did. Um, so you want it to come together more into a ball and a little less crumbly than I had um, shown in the previous clip. So it's now time for us to roll out our pastry and get it into the pie tin. I roll my uh, pastry between two sheets of baking paper. You don't have to do that. You can put some flour on a board and then roll it out on that. I just find the most efficient way to do it um, is to roll it between two sheets of uh, baking paper or parchment paper and then I can invert it into my pie plate. Um, I'm also, we're going to roll this pastry to about half a centimetre. I'm really lucky to have one of these rolling pins that has the uh, guides or the thickness guides um, on the edge. If not, you can just roll it out to about half a centimetre thick. Um, so let's get rolling. And I'm just using one of these nine inch pie plates, shallow pie plate to make my quiche in. So that's what I'm using. My hands are clean, um, so this is what it looks like. You'll see that it's a lot less crumbly than it was before, so it's just come together really nicely, and that's why I went ahead and added that extra little bit of milk. Perfect, so I'm just gonna roll this out until um, we get to our desired thickness and we have it big enough to be able to fit our um, pie plate. So when I roll out the pastry, I try and turn it as often as I can just to get it as um, just to try and make a circle as much as I can. But if you don't, it's not really a big deal. You can always patch um, patch areas of the pie plate with extra dough anyway. Um, this is quite forgiving, so. It does take a little bit of strength to get this rolled out because it's cold. Um, if you find that you're just having a hard time, just let it sit on the bench for a few minutes um, and that should allow it to be rolled out much more easily. It'll probably also be easier if you don't have a uh, bench or island that moves as easily as mine does as well to roll this out. <laughs> okay, I think that is ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull off my top piece of pastry. Oh. Uh, this is not pastry, this is baking paper. And I'm not going to throw that away just yet, I am going to reuse it. Okay, so here is our pie plate, and I can see that it does fit. So all I'm going to do is grab my pastry with the baking paper still on the back and place it on top. And then with the baking paper still in there, I'm going to go ahead and just push the pastry in as much as I can. And I'm actually going to reposition it because I just find this way makes it a whole lot easier to be able to line pie trays than other ways that I've tried before. Okay, so I've got that pushed into the sides nicely and you'll go. You'll see here there are some bits that I probably want to fill out a little bit more. So I'm just going to break off edges of pastry and just 
stick them on. And like I said, this is a really forgiving pastry, so hopefully you can see that in the camera, but you'll see there's still flecks of butter all through the pastry, which is what we want. That's gonna give us our nice flaky pastry. At this point, it's really up to you what you'd like to do. You can go ahead and cut off the excess pastry, but what I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually roll it under and then uh, indent there just to finish off the pie crust. So all I do is take the extra pastry and push it under like this just to finish off those edges nicely and it also gives you a little bit more space for filling even though this is a shallow pie dish by raising the height with the pastry um, I can put more I can get more filling in there. It doesn't need to be beautiful, you know. Okay, so now that I have done that and raised those edges, I'm gonna take my thumb and my, is it your index finger? Hmm. Anyway, my thumb and my index finger, and I'm going to fork them like this, and then I'm going to take my pointer finger on this hand and just push it in like that to finish the edges of this pastry. So this is what our finished pie shell looks like. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this back in the fridge, but really this is uh, ready to be used for whatever type of pie filling you'd like to use it with. So I'm going to put it in the fridge. I'm going to use that, this with our quiche recipe tonight. If you'd like to check out that recipe, I'm going to link it in the iCards or put and put the link down in the description below so you can access that easily. Um, Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, please leave us a thumbs up. Um, and I will see you next time.